everyone and welcome back to Faith and Flower. I'm Robin and in today's video I'm going to be showing you some meal ideas and recipes, things that we typically eat around here and what we eat in about a week's time. So if you guys are interested in that let me know by leaving a comment below and giving me a thumbs up. Day one is taco soup. Today I am putting chicken in this recipe, but that can easily be omitted. My family loves it. It's great for using up pantry items, and I like making it in the crock pot to make it even more simple. My crock pot has an insert that can be put on the stove top safely, so I'm able to saute some onions on the stove and get it going before I put it in my crock pot itself. And if your crock pot doesn't have an insert that is stove safe, then I would just use a separate pan for sauteing the onions and then you can transfer everything directly to your crock pot. To the onions, I add some chicken broth or vegetable broth, some canned tomatoes, and I definitely prefer the fire roasted, a can of corn. As you can see, I don't even drain that for this recipe. And then I'm adding in some green chilies. I'm adding just chili powder and cumin as spices for this recipe. And I will have the full recipe with all the measurements down in the description box. I would treat this recipe just as a loose guide. You can add so many different things to it. I'm going to be adding black beans to my recipe today, but you could put in pinto beans or kidney beans and other vegetables that your family likes. Like I said, it's a great way to use items from your pantry during this time where we might not be wanting to go to the grocery store often or we have limited ingredients on hand. This is the type of soup that you can make and use what you have. As I said, this recipe is great without any added protein, but if you want to add chicken, it does add a lot of flavor and texture, of course, and if your family likes meat, this is a great recipe to include that. I have two frozen chicken breasts on hand. You can use chicken thighs if you prefer, and you can put them in frozen like this. So I just make sure that it is submerged within the liquid. I put this insert back into my crock pot, and I set it either on low for six hours or on high for four hours. When the cooking time is complete, I just remove the insert from my crock pot and then I take out the chicken and put it on a plate to shred. And you'll know it's ready when the chicken is basically falling apart on its own. There are several reasons why I like to shred the chicken and return it to the soup. I find that it evenly distributes the chicken throughout the soup. It also stretches out to chicken breast to about six servings or so, which I think is great. And I also find that the chicken seems less dry this way. Sometimes chicken breast in particular can get dry in the crock pot and this eliminates that. I've tried cutting it up and adding it to the soup and I like this method the best. While this recipe is simmering, it is making our kitchen and our home smell amazing. And it's calling hungry family members to the kitchen who are swiping chicken off the plate before I can even get it back into the soup. to top the soup with some avocado and sprinkle on a little bit of this chili lime seasoning that we get from Trader Joe's. This soup would also be great topped with some shredded cheese or sour cream, anything that your family loves. This also can be easily doubled or tripled and freezes really well. It's a great crowd pleasing recipe and my family loves it. Day two, we're having chicken sausage, braised carrots, and coleslaw. I always start with the coleslaw so that it can be sort of marinating while I'm preparing the rest of the meal. In fact, this is better done even earlier in the day if possible. I usually make enough so that we can have it for other meals later in the week. It just gets better over time. So I just take a cabbage, I quarter it, remove the core, and then thinly slice it. In a large bowl, I will whisk together some mayonnaise, some apple cider vinegar, a little bit of pickle relish, sweet pickle relish, salt, and pepper. I don't measure any of these things. I just do it according to taste and according to how large or small the cabbage is that I'm using. 
I found that using salad tongs works the best to make sure that all of the cabbage is really well coated with the sauce. Then I just set it aside while I'm preparing the rest of the meal or if I've made it ahead of time, I store it in the refrigerator and take it out when I'm ready to serve. We have become a big fan of chicken sausage. This one comes from Imperfect Foods. If you're not familiar with them, I will have a link in the description box. We have also found some really good ones at Trader Joe's, and they are very flavorful and have a lot less fat than traditional sausage, and they've become a big family favorite lately. Braised carrots couldn't be easier, and they're one of my favorite sides, especially to go with this meal. And I just add to the sliced carrots about a tablespoon of butter, and then just just a little bit of stock, it can be chicken, beef, or vegetable, whatever you prefer, to allow the carrots to steam. And once they are soft, I remove the lid and just let most of the liquid evaporate. The butter and the stock give the carrots a lot of flavor, but if you need to, you can add salt and pepper to taste. I usually try to avoid desserts during the week, but having fruit after dinner is a really nice treat, and so I like to prepare some and keep it in the refrigerator, and tonight we are going to enjoy some after our meal. So I have some mango, some pineapple, and some champagne grapes. On day three, we actually had the leftover taco soup from earlier in the week for dinner. So I'm showing you what we had for lunch and it was just a simple chef salad. This is a great way to use up some fresh ingredients that you have on hand. I had romaine lettuce, some cucumber, I boiled an egg and added a little cheese. You can also add some canned ingredients like I had pickled beets, you could also add canned corn. The possibilities are endless. You can make your own salad dressing or I just kept it simple and use some of our favorite which is the Brianna's balsamic dressing. For day four, we are having Instant Pot Creamy Turmeric Lentil Soup. This is another very easy and rather quick recipe that I love making in the Instant Pot. And as I was filming this week, we had cooler weather. So once the weather turns warmer, we won't be having as many soups and things like that. We'll move to more fresh ingredients, things that don't heat up the kitchen. But this recipe is very simple and it does use pantry ingredients once again. So I enjoy making this for a fairly quick but very nutritious and satisfying dinner. I love using my Instant Pot for recipes like this. It is fast and easy. I just put the Instant Pot on saute mode and saute together some onions and carrots, and then I blend together the spices for this recipe. The dry spices I'm using are turmeric, hence the name, and some cumin, also a little bit of salt and pepper, and then this recipe also contains garlic and ginger, coconut milk, things that give it tons of flavor. I'll have this recipe in the description box with all of the ingredients and measurements. The lentils that I'm using in this recipe are yellow lentils, and they may be hard to find in your regular grocery store, but they can be found in most Indian grocery stores or online. And they work really well to break down into the soup and give it a really nice creamy texture. So I love using these. I just rinse and drain them before adding them. And then I add some canned tomatoes. I really enjoy the fire roast ones for the flavor that they add and some coconut milk. While I'm mixing in all of the ingredients, I like to keep the Instant Pot set on the saute mode. As you can see, my coconut milk is a little bit solid because our house is still cool. So keeping it on saute mode will keep the pot warm, allow that coconut milk and all of the ingredients to meld a little bit before I set the Instant Pot to pressure cook. And here I'm adding the turmeric and the cumin, which give it this beautiful yellow color. I'm just going to add stock up to the fill line. I have a very small Instant Pot, it's the three quart. So sometimes two quarts is a little much. So I just judge by that line because you don't want to overfill. And you can even add the rest of the stock after it's finished cooking if you like.
start the cooking, I just pop on the lid and make sure that the pressure valve is set to sealing, and then you are going to set it to pressure cook for just three minutes. Everything will be finished in three minutes, but you are going to allow enough time for the pressure to come down gradually and release naturally instead of doing a quick release. Because this recipe is very creamy, you could have a sort of volcano effect if you try to release the pressure too early. So I wanna caution you about that, but it usually only takes about around 15 or 20 minutes or so total. Once the soup is ready to be removed from your pressure cooker, add about a tablespoon of lemon or lime juice. Here I'm adding lime juice and a couple tablespoons of maple syrup. This will give it just a little bit of sweetness. My favorite way to serve this is just a soup all on its own. It's a great one pot meal, but if you would like to stretch it out or have it read more like a curry, you can serve it over rice like we're doing tonight. The lentils in this recipe almost just melt into the soup and create a very creamy rich texture along with the coconut milk. I just love this. It's very warming, very soothing, and very nutritious. So if you can get your hands on some yellow lentils, this is a great way to use them. Again on day five, we decided to have the leftover soup from the night before for dinner. And for lunch, we had egg and cheese sandwiches with some of the coleslaw that I made earlier in the week. For the sandwiches, I use some homemade English muffins that I made from my sourdough starter, and they are amazing. So if you guys are interested, I'll have a video linked below all about that. And then on the sandwich, I put a little mayo, some cheese, and a fried egg, and my guys love them. And the coleslaw was the perfect accompaniment. On day six, we enjoyed a Swiss family favorite. It's great for a cold evening and we had a little cold snap, so I was really happy to be able to enjoy this. As an American, I think you would probably look at this as something like a rice pudding, but there aren't any eggs in it. It's simply just milk, rice, a little bit of salt, a little sugar, and then at the end you sprinkle some cinnamon sugar over top. Usually this is served with some canned fruit or something like that, so we enjoyed it with some canned peaches. This is a fairly easy meal to make, but it does take a little bit of time. So you start with quite a lot of milk, and when it comes almost to a boil, you add some rice. And jasmine rice is my favorite for this recipe. It works perfectly. And you just keep an eye on it. You need to keep it at a very low boil. Milk, when you boil it, can overflow easily. So you wanna keep an eye on it and make sure that doesn't happen and stir it fairly frequently so that it doesn't scorch on the bottom. I'd say it takes around 20 minutes to make, just like regular rice, sometimes a little bit longer. You just have to take it slow and let it do its thing, and it is so worth the wait. It is just rich and creamy and just so satisfying and so simple. Here I'm adding a little bit of vanilla at the end. I don't think that's traditional, but I like the extra added sort of sweetness and floral flavor that it gives this dish. In Switzerland, people still usually eat their main meal in the middle of the day, so this would be a dinner dish, and we like to enjoy it in the evening as well. It just reminds us of cold winter nights, snuggling up with a warm blanket. It's just pure comfort food. I didn't include day seven in this video because it was pizza night and we do pizza night almost every week. We will take our pizza into the living room, watch a movie together as a family, and it's just a nice tradition that we've done ever since the boys were little. This video has been highly requested, so I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to give me a thumbs up and let me know in the comments. If you're new here at Faith and Flower, I hope you will check out my other videos and I want to invite you to subscribe. Subscribing is absolutely free. All you have to do is click on my picture and if you activate the bell icon, you'll be notified each time I upload a new video and you won't miss out on anything. Thank you guys for spending your time with me today. I look forward to seeing you in the comments and in the next video. Have a great week.